Hello everyone, I am Darren Levine and I am holding a Canon M5. It's one of their newer mirrorless options. So I've been putting off getting myself an upgrade for a bit too long now, been sitting on the sidelines, looking at all the vast numbers of options and never could quite hit the order button on an upgrade. So to give you a preface, I did not expect to like this camera. It just, it didn't seem like the right fit for me, but I decided to give it a go anyways just to see. Sometimes you can be surprised. So I took it out on a gig with my other camera bodies and I overall did enjoy it, but I did confirm that it is not quite the camera for me. And that's what I'm gonna go over here. I'm not gonna get really in the depths of details of every little piece of features in it, uh, but more just to give you an idea of what I went through to really feel out whether or not this could be the next camera for me versus the other options I'm considering, which I'll let you know right up the front, is the A7 III or the GH5. Those are my top choices, but I've been keeping a lookout all over the place with Olympus, Fuji, everything, because I like options. So this is a good time to jump in for just a second to mention that before I could release this video, a whole bunch of things happened in the mirrorless market, which I couldn't mention because they hadn't happened yet. Nikon and Canon finally put out some professional level mirrorless cameras, and even Fuji tossed up some nice offerings. All very tasty stuff, but interestingly, there's still a gap in the Canon and Nikon lineups. They still have no one to two thousand dollar-ish offerings, which is the market I'll be speaking about in this video. And at the time, the M5, despite being under a thousand dollars, was the best offering they had for mirrorless. If you were to compare it to the uh, Canon traditional lineup, the M5 and M50 appear to be about the range of the Rebel or 100 series cameras. The new EOS R looks akin to the 1 series like the 5D, and what they are missing is something akin to the 10 series like the 80D, though these are rough equivalents, so don't take them as gospel. So now let's jump right back in. To start off the bat, or really to just kind of give you the, uh, the summary right up front, the biggest reason why I figured this is not the camera for me is the ergonomics. It just does not fit my hand very well. It is a very compact camera. And of course, it's advertised as a compact camera, no surprise there, but there are some surprisingly well ergonomically designed compact cameras that fit my hand fairly well. Previously, I considered the GH series, which you're seeing me on now, which is a GH3, which is now considered quite old, but it's been my workhorse for quite a while now. I feel like this is, or at least was considered a compact camera, but when I compare the two grips, that feels enormous and fits my hand great versus this, which is just, it just squeezes too little into there. So just to start off, the image quality is really nice. It's got the 24 megapixel sensor in there and it's a very nice sensor, I like it. The image quality is great. Uh, I only shot up to ISO 3200, which is typically the highest L I ever use, and it looked perfectly nice and uniform. It didn't have any you know, nasty type of noise. It was more of a uh, fine-grained noise that I could easily notch out when, of course, Adobe is not being finicky. So, as many of you know, I do a lot of video. I wasn't too impressed with the overall features. The main thing is, is you do get a microphone input port so you can plug in an external microphone. That's great, but there is no headphone port for monitoring. But they do also give you an HDMI out port. But note, it's the micro HDMI, which I really don't prefer. It's just, I don't trust it. Any little knock and it could come out. If I was gonna need to use it, I would probably tape it over every single time, use a right angle adapter to keep it as secure as possible for anything that's client based. I don't like to take risks. But let's go back to what I was talking about the video features. Uh, I did take some test shots, you know, mostly on auto with the picture style. Um, I liked generally how it handled the autofocus. It was pretty good, um, but I don't know if it's gonna be as good as the newer one. The newer one is the M50, which wasn't available for rental yet. Apparently that has even better video autofocus. But overall it did look fine, but it doesn't do 4K. <clears throat> Excuse me. It tops out at 1080 and that's fine for a lot of people but at this point in the game even though I'm not getting 4k requests <clears throat> From clients. I like capturing 4k for b-roll and for other reasons like could like for instance in editing uh, If I have b-roll it's in 4k I can punch in quite a bit so long as the ISO is low and the noise isn't crazy and also just for my own purposes I like to take stock footage in body stabilization. This does not have it, nor does the M50, the newer version. They do have a digital stabilization that is available in video mode, which is nice, it helps. But 
I want optical stable, not, I'm sorry, not optical, IBIS, the in-body uh, stabilization that the sensor shifts any number of axes. Now we're currently up to five axes. And for some reason, Canon does not want to add those. They seem to be hell-bent on keeping that a uh, lens-only feature. But that's the reason why I got, I wanted to try this out, to see where they were at with their uh, mirrorless cameras. The first mirrorless cameras from Canon were decidedly very consumer. There did not seem to be any consideration or, or uh, any sort of indication that they were going to be doing a professional mirrorless body like a lot of the other manufacturers are doing, most notably Sony, who are putting out mirrorless cameras like hotcakes. So this seems like it's a step in that direction. I would call this prosumer. Um, I used it professionally on a gig and it worked just fine. It was a little lacking in overall speed, but the, I should say the autofocus speed was actually quite good actually. Um, but the overall speed in which I could modify the settings was my biggest issue because my hand doesn't quite grip this very well. There's a bunch of dials and that's great. This dial I can mostly handle pretty easily, but this dial is just tucked in there. My thumb just could never quite find it properly. But that's something that could change over time. If you buy the camera and use it very often, you get more of a feel for it. But that's just my first impression using it very briefly. But the main thing really is that grip. You can see how shallow it is if I put it up against an old T3i, which I still use. I just, you know, usually have as my wide angle, quick, ready to go kind of camera. And you can see the grip is just so much shallower here. I never really liked the T3i grip also. It's just the, it's the way it's shaped. It's a lot more narrow in the corner, but overall I can still access buttons and dials a lot quicker than with this guy. Although notably the T3i never had a dedicated uh, aperture dial. You had to hold the button for it, but like I said, I got used to that because I used it plenty. This one, you do have more dedicated dials to use. And I also do like the exposure compensation dial. Um, it's one of those things where you think, eh, I can just dial in a setting for that. But you know what, when you're running gun, you're doing something really quick, to be able to dial in plus or minus a little bit is a really nice trick. One thing I really don't like is actually the push button to release the dial to rotate. On the one hand, it's nice to feel safe that you're not gonna accidentally bump it, but I've, I can't remember a single time I've ever had that happen. And it's more of an issue to me to wanna to quickly switch modes and have to press the little thing in and then rotate it. It's just, I'd rather not have a locking dial. So on other cameras, you could actually leave it pop, the button popped up, but on this, now you have to just hold it down to be able to get into it. They also put the power button over here. Not a big deal, I prefer it over here, but that's a nitpick. The other thing, and this is common with Sony as well, one of the reasons why I really like the, Can the uh, Panasonic line, is they only opt for the tilty screen. So the tilty screen, of course, you can look straight down, you can look almost straight up, yeah, about straight up, but you cannot point it to the side. I'm using the GH3 right now, and I can see myself because I, could, I rotated the screen so I can point it towards me. That's perfect. I don't know why they really have not wanted to do that with a lot of these other cameras and other manufacturers. So one really quick thing about the mount, because this is not an EF mount, it's an EFM mount. And you can't just take any of your EFS or EF lenses and mount it directly to it. But you use a very simple adapter that goes right from EFS and EF to the EFM mount. But I would recommend not getting the Canon one just because they want $200 for it. And it doesn't seem necessary, but there's already plenty of these uh, lower cost models out there from various manufacturers. This one was uh, $40 and it seems to work just fine. That is nice that you can very quickly get all of your Canon glass onto here. And that brings me to my search for my next camera, which as I've said, I've easily identified that this camera just isn't right for me because of ergonomics and the way the buttons are laid out, there's too much in the menus and all that put together. So what I've been looking at are the GH5 and the a7 III. They're both very good cameras, but let's consider that I have mostly Canon glass. You can adapt Canon glass to both of those mounts. You can adapt it to the Sony E mount as well as the Micro Four Thirds mount. And I have an adapter which I use with the GH3. I have the, uh, the Viltrox, uh, whatever the model is, it's the one with the uh, the glass in it, the speed boosting glass, or so the speed booster is the Metabones nomenclature. So that 
The issue I've had is autofocus, and it could just be that that is the you know, cheaper adapter, and this is an older GH3. They might just not be optimized, but the autofocus I tried out in all my lenses was really hit or miss. I have seen other people using a GH5 with the Viltrox as well as the Metabones, and they seem to be getting pretty good autofocus results. I have had just fine autofocus uh, experiences in photography with the GH3 with the native M43 lenses. Focus is just fine for me, but I only have a couple lenses for that. I have mostly Canon glass. So if I was going to really pick just for the photography end of it, I would probably go with the Sony. The Sony is a full frame, but you can just always crop in to use EFS lenses like this uh, Sigma 17 to 50. It's got the built in in body stabilization. And the low light on it is insane. You'll never be wanting for more low light ability, which sometimes comes in handy for events, especially if I'm using a longer lens that can't open up quite as wide, or I just need to increase my shutter speed to capture action. So any number of reasons why the in-body stabilization is so useful, but as well as the high ISO can be useful. So why don't I just get the a7 III? Well, I do a lot of video, and the GH3 has served me very well in that respect, so the GH5 seems like a natural upgrade. So the GH5 is great, but for that bit of ISO, it seems to be able to do pretty well up until 3200, but after that it gets pretty nasty. I did say that 3200 is typically my high end, but it's 2018. If I'm going to upgrade, I would like that upgrade to last a good bit of time. So depending on what kind of glass I might end up with, or if I'm just using the current glass, you know, occasionally I do look for higher ISO if it's available. And if it was available, I would use it, especially for events where everything is just very run and gun and capture what you can. The other option is to get two cameras, which is, yeah, that's really the best of both worlds because, well, there is no one perfect camera for every situation. But these two cameras get so close, they really do. Uh, but on the video end, I should mention the GH5 has the superior codex. You can do 10-bit 422 in 4K, and you can do, I believe it's 60 frames per second in 4K and up to 180 frames per second in 1080. So that's another really big tick off the boxes for the GH5. So what I might end up doing is do something like getting an A6500 or an A7 II, or is it A7R2? I think it's A7 II, as well as a GH5. The A7 and A7 II are an insanely good value right now. They're at uh, $1,000 and $1,100, and I think the A7, that price comes with a, a kit lens. So what you get for the price these days is awesome. So lots of good choices that are making it tough. And the one reason why I might not go for an A6500 is the same ergonomics reason as this. It's got also a fairly small grip. And you know what? The grip is very important when running around doing a lot of these, uh, types, these uh, event type of works. So that is really the long roundabout, uh, long-winded way of telling you that I tried the USM, EOS M5 and overall it puts out a nice image. It feels well designed. I should mention the viewfinder also is quite crisp. I like it. I also, one thing I forgot to mention is I don't like that you have to open the battery door to get your SD card out. But that's just a couple of the details that really seem to put this closer to the consumer end or the high-end hobbyist than the professional user. But of course, you can use it professionally, but it just has those shortcomings. So overall, I'm looking forward to see what Canon does for the future of mirrorless. It seems like they're, this is their toe in the uh, dipping in the water type thing. And the M50 also looks like they're putting a little more into mirrorless, a little more, a little more, but it's not quite there yet for at least my uses. So that's it for this one. It's also got Wi-Fi, I'll never use that, but <laughs> that is the EOS M5, and I'll let you know what happens with the, my eventual purchase.